Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to InfoGamer, and today we have another tutorial on the basics of Unity. For this lesson, we're going to be going over something called Transform. Now before I tell you what a Transform is, you'll need to understand what a game object is in Unity. A game object is the standard building block that we use in Unity to create our games. It's like the dough for when you're making a pizza. Anytime you create anything in Unity, you're creating a new instance of a game object. So to create a basic game object, you'll need to go to the top and click on Game Object here, and then Create Empty. You can also use Control shift n to create a new instance of a game object. So we'll go ahead and create a new one. And so here you can see that in the hierarchy, we now have this game object, which is what we just created. Every game object can hold things called components, or in other words, they can have attributes attached to them, which will modify the game object in many different ways. You can see here in the inspector that the only component that we have for our empty game object is the transform. This is because the transform is the default component that comes on all game objects. But there are many other components that you can add to your game objects, which will do anything from changing the way it looks, to the way it moves, to the way it functions with its physics. So to show you the difference, we have our empty game object, which only has its transform, and then we, I've also gone ahead and created a sphere and a cube. And the sphere and cube have things called mesh filters, which give it its shape, and it also has a sphere collider, or a box collider, and a mesh renderer, which makes it so that you can see the shape of the object. So for the rest of this demonstration, I'm going to be using the sphere and the cube, and I'll just go ahead and delete the empty game object that we created. So you now know that every game object that you'll ever create will already have a default component of transform. And to give you the official definition of transform that Unity has put together in their documentation, they've said every game object in a scene has a transform. It is used to store and manipulate the position, rotation, and scale of an object. Every transform can have a parent, which allows you to apply position, rotation, and scale hierarchically. So in other words, the transform of an object has two main purposes. The first is to access or alter the position, rotation, and scale of an object. And the second is to access or alter the location of an object in the hierarchy, whether that is by setting the parent of the object or getting a child object. Now it might be a little easier to understand the first purpose of the transform if we explain the second part first. So talking about how transform can relate to the hierarchy, we'll need to go to the hierarchy window. Now the hierarchy window shows everything that is contained inside our scene view in the order that we created the objects. So here you can see that the first thing that was created in our scene was the main camera, then the cube and a directional light, and finally the sphere. It'll remain in this order unless I manually change the order by clicking on an object and dragging it higher in the hierarchy or clicking on an object and dragging it lower in the hierarchy. So every object has the ability to be a parent object or a child object. Currently in the hierarchy, there are no parents and there are no child objects. But to create a parent or a child object, you'll want to select whichever object you want to be the child object and drag it on to the object that you want to be the parent object. So I want to drag the sphere object onto the cube, making the cube its parent and the sphere the cube's child. Now in a future video, I'll go into a lot more depth about parent objects and child objects and how you access one or the other using code. And that's really the second purpose of transform. Now that you understand how to set a parent and a child object, I'll explain how to modify the position, rotation, and scale of an object. So because we're working in a 3D space, there are three dimensions which will affect the position, rotation, and scale of an object. So I'll start with position, and I'll explain those three dimensions. So because we're working in a 3D space, this means that there are three dimensions which will affect the position, rotation, and scale of an object. So you can see in the scene view that everything is laid out on a grid. There's an X, a Y, and a Z axis. The X is colored with red, 
The Y is colored with green and the Z is colored with blue. There's also this gizmo up here in the right hand corner which you can use to change the view of your scene. I can look at it from the right or from the front or from the top or any other direction I want to. But now I'll go ahead and explain the position of an object. So to modify the position of an object you can use the move tool which is selected up here in the top right corner or you can click W on your keyboard. This will make these three arrows appear when you have your game object selected and you can change the position of the object in world space whether it be on the x-axis or the y-axis or the z-axis. So now I've gone ahead and changed it and you can see up here in the inspector under transform that we have position and here's the x, the y, and the z. And you can modify it once again by typing in a specific number into each of these fields or you can cursor over the x, the y, or the z, click and drag left or drag right to make the number go smaller or bigger. And these three numbers are coordinates in these directions from zero. So you can see that our object in the x direction is negative 0.12 units away from the center of the x axis. It's 0.39 units away from the center of the y axis and negative 1.9 units away from the center of the z axis. Now all this was done using a setting on our move tool called local, which means that we're changing its position according to the local object. The other setting that we can use to change the position is called global. And I'll come back to this and explain more about the global position of an object. Now the last thing to note on position is that because the sphere was a child object to our cube, as we move our cube, the sphere moves with it. And if we were to select our sphere, you can see that the position is 0 in the x direction, 1 in the y direction, and 0 in the z direction. That is because these are the coordinates from the center of the parent object. So if I were to change this y to 0, our sphere is 0, 0, 0 on the cube. And if I were to change the x coordinate to 1, and the y coordinate to 1, and the z coordinate to 1, you will see that it's one unit to the right of the object, one unit up from the object, and one unit back from the object. The next tool that I'll teach you about is called the Rotate tool. This can be accessed by clicking on the button that's to the right of the Move tool with the two arrows, or you can press E on the keyboard. You can see that the gizmo on our object has changed. It's changed from these arrows to these surrounding circles. Now to rotate an object, you can click on one of these three colored circles, and you'll see that the color corresponds with the axes. So if you want to rotate an object around the x-axis, you'll grab the red circle and drag it in one of the two directions. You can also grab the green circle for the y direction and the blue circle for the z direction. Now that I've rotated our cube, you can see here in the inspector that these units have changed. You can also modify the rotation of an object by typing in specific numbers to one of these three fields, or you can do as we did with position and click on one of these three letters, then drag in left or right directions to modify the value of its rotation. You'll also see the same has happened with our sphere as it did with position. The sphere has not changed its rotation because it has rotated with the cube and its rotation is relative to the cube. And if you rotate the sphere, you will see that it has rotated according to the rotation of the cube. Now that we've gone over rotation, we'll actually take a step back and go to position and I'll explain that global setting. So if I click on the cube, you can see that its position is still relative to the object's x, y, and z coordinates. But if I were to click on the local setting and change it to global, you will see that it's according to the scenes x, y, and z. Now that we've covered position and rotation, I'll tell you about scale. Scale is accessed by clicking the icon that's to the right of the rotation tool, or you can click R on the keyboard. You will see that the gizmo 
for this tool has changed to these four cubes. The center white cube is used for scaling the object in all three dimensions. The red cube is used for scaling the object in the x direction, the green for the y, and the blue for the z. Now watch here in the inspector as I change the scale of the object. You will see that the numbers for the x, the y, and the z get bigger. The object in the scene is also getting bigger. You can also shrink it smaller than what it was. And by clicking on these individual cubes, you can scale the objects in those directions. The scale of the object can be modified using this tool, or you can change it straight up in the inspector. Now once again, when we click on the sphere, you'll see that the scale of the object is still 1, 1, 1. That's because the sphere has changed according to the cube, and the cube is its parent child, and so its relation is still 1, 1, 1. But if we change the scale of the sphere individually, you'll see that it gets bigger, and that's because it's getting bigger than the current scale of the cube. So that's all the basic info that you need to know in order to modify the transform of an object. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, go ahead and hit the subscribe button.